What's up guys? Welcome back to another tutorial on JS Psych. So now we have created our experiment and we have run it successfully. So we have to save the data. So today we are going to learn how to save the data in the CSV format. And let's begin. So we have to create a function that saves the data. And then we have to put it into our JS site um, in it when it's finished. So right now it's only displaying the data. We don't want that. We want to save the data. So let's create a new file called Java, um, JavaScript file. And I'm going to call it utilities. In case I have more stuff I want to put inside, I'm going to call it utils. So this function for saving or saving a CSV file is not created. So we have to create a new function. So it's called func function. Then the name of the function, what do you call it? Let me call it download CSV. And we are going to put the object. Let's call it CSV instead. CSV. So this is the object. And you have to give a file name. A file name for the object. Because you can't save the CSV as a file, the same file all the time. You have to save it as different files. So let's create a variable called CSV file. It's empty, we're gonna populate it later. And new variable is called download link. So this is the so-called um, container for the, the doc document itself, the thing you want to download. So we're going to retrieve the CSV file. Retrieve CSV file from experiment. So CSV file, this is where we're going to put it in. It's going to be a new block. So a blob, it's like an object. It's called binary large object. So it, you can think of it like a file, like a CSV file, like a multimedia file, a MP3, MP4, a picture, JPEG. So these are the content inside those files. So new blob, CSV. So this is where the CSV object is going to be. And then we have to name the type of object. So this is a text slash CSV. Okay, so now we have retrieved. So we know where our CSV file is going to be. So it's going to be inside CSV file. And then we have to create a download link. So this is where your download link comes in. So document is going to search your document dot create element. Let's call it A. And we have to retrieve the file name. Retrieve file name. So this whole download link dot download. So we will, what, what I'm going to download, we are going to download into this file. So the file name, we're going to download the file name. So to create a link. To the file. So download link. A link is called href. Window dot url dot create object url. So we're gonna create the URL for the object. So which is our CSV file, our CSV object. That's why we need to call create a that's where we put the CSV file inside. And then we don't want it to show, we just want the function. We just want the function itself. So we, do, we don't want to show the link. So we don't want to display. The link. We need to um, 
put it into the body itself so it knows where to get the link. So it's document dot style, no sorry, dot display dot body dot append child. So we're gonna put it into the document itself and when we click it, so download link dot click. So it's supposed to have a link for you to click and then it could, it's, it downloads. So we don't have a button for you to click. So it's, it's actually a function. So we don't want participants to not save the data. We want you to be saved automatically. So we call download.click. And then there it goes. Here's our function to download CSV. And then we can put it here. So download CSV. So CSV, let's put the arguments inside first. File name. So the thing is, we don't have this in our script, so we have to add it to the script. Let me put a space so I know this comes from my own um, JavaScript rather than the plugins. So it's now inside site tutorial, but let's move it inside JS. So okay, so right now I have my download CSV. And then the next thing we have to do is to get a csv from the data itself so var csv equals js site dot data dot get so you get the data so this returns uh, an object itself but we want it in csv form so we have to change it to csv so this is where we get our csv data and then we need the file name what we're going to name it so let's name it um, simple reaction time task dot task dot csv. Let's name it like that for now. Then we have our first set of data. Um, so our experiment procedure is five. Our practice procedure we have one repetition. So right now we have everything that we need. So let's just test it. Okay, with the whole procedure. So one repetition for practice and five for our experimental block. Okay, now that we have finished, the next slide should show that, tell us that we have to download our file and then show the data. So right now, I'm gonna put it in desktop. So right now we have our file here. It's downloaded. So let's open it and see what it contains. I'm gonna drag it. So you see we have the RT for each of the screen. So we see the welcome block with the screen ID. So for the past few sec, um, tutorials, we have been looking at the data from the screen itself is in JSON format. But for us who are psychologists, who are running experiments online, this might be a cleaner way or a more organized way for us that we are used to. So you can see this is the welcome instruction, welcome screen, the instruction screen. We have the fixation, trial feedback. And then we have the Feedback here with the accuracy. And then the experiment ends, and we have see the experimental instructions here, and you see the trial. So you have the key press and the correct response and the accuracy. So if all we need for the data right now. So that's it. So we have created our first experiment from scratch.
we're able to save it. So in the next few tutorials, we'll look at how we can organize this data into a cleaner format. So right now it's just, it looks like all the HTML code are there. It looks very messy from my point of view. So we also do not know um, which stimulus is shown, whether it's the orange or the, yes, we do know. But here we can just, we can delete this. We don't need that. We can just put fixation. So there are lots of things we can clean up. So that's what the next few tutorial is going to be, learning how to clean up our script and our experiment. So that's it for today's tutorial. Thank you for watching.